John Calvin on Psalm 132, verses 1 through 11. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to mine eyes or slumber to mine eyelids, until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, we heard of it at Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. He swore an oath to the Lord, and made a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. Until informed of the place of the ark's destined residence, David was full of concern and anxiety, dwelling in his house or when he lay upon his bed. As to the vow itself, this and other passages afford no ground for supposing with the papists that God approves of whatever vows they may utter without regard to the nature of them. To vow unto God that which he has himself declared to be agreeable to him is a commendable practice, but it is too much presumption on our part to say that we will rush upon such vows as suit our carnal inclination. The great thing is that we consider what is agreeable to his will, otherwise we may be found depriving him of that wherein indeed his principal right lies, for with him, quote, to obey is better than sacrifice, unquote, 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. Let us go to his dwelling place, let us worship at his footstool, on the one hand, it is a mere superstition to suppose God confined to the temple, and on the other hand, the external symbols are not without their use in the church. In short, we should improve these as helps to our faith, but not rest in them. While God dwells in heaven and is above all heavens, we must avail ourselves of helps in rising to the knowledge of him and in giving us symbols of his presence. He sets, as it were, his feet upon the earth, and suffers us to touch them. It is thus that the Holy Spirit condescends for our profit, and in accommodation to our infirmity, raising our thoughts to heavenly and divine things by these worldly elements. May your priests be clothed with righteousness. God is said to clothe us with his righteousness when he appears as our Savior and help, defends us by his power, and shows in his government of us that we are the objects of his care. The rejoicing which is spoken of has reference to a life of happiness. The saints of God are called merciful ones, because mercy and beneficence is that grace which assimilates us most to God.